Yeah. You gotta start somewhere, and you know, a, a good tiki bar is never done. No. You're always, you know, improving and adding, and you know, as Bamboo Ben would say, layers, layers on layers. Oh no, well, the props to the Bamboo Ben. Right now, we are in a, a part of the bar that literally feels like we're in the, the hull of a, of a wooden ship. That's right. Yeah, we call it the captain's quarters. Uh, just before you reach the poop deck, um, we have this cool little uh, ship hall and a nice little uh, lava rock cave that you get to explore through to actually get up here. It, in a weird way, in a weird way, it's sort of like this. Kind of reminds me of like being at like a, like an amusement park, and like being a, in a dark ride, like in a fun house kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It feels that way almost, but like with with like liquor involved. Hi everyone, this is Ray, as some of you might know me as Tiki with Ray, and today I am in Napa. Is this Napa, or Napa Valley, or Napa County, or is it just Napa? It is all three of those things, and downtown Napa. Downtown Napa. Right on the river. And I'll tell you what, this is the first time I've ever been here, and it's beautiful. It's really, really beautiful. As I was driving up, and I'm, is that like, what river is it? Is that a river that's right there? Like yeah, it's the Napa River coming the Napa up from, river. from the bay. And we are in Wilfred's Lounge. And this is the newest tiki bar that you are behind. This is Doc, Daniel Doc Parks. Should I call you Daniel? Should I call you Mr. Parks? Should I call you Doc? What you, should I call you? You know, all are correct, but most people call me Doc these days. I'm gonna call you Doc these days. So Doc these days, <laughs> thank you for coming on the show. My pleasure, thanks for having me. So I met Doc at TikiCon, I'm thinking it's 2018. Mm -hmm. And um, I knew of you because at the time, you were with Pagan Idol. Before you did Pagan Idol, were you involved with any other things? How did you get into Tiki out of anything? Well, what, what came first, like becoming a, like being into Tiki or being a, do, being like a bar manager, or bar owner, whatever you are? Well, uh, I've been you know around Tiki my whole life. Yeah. Uh, thanks to my my grandparents who were close to the Sealies, um, so uh, related to Trader Vic himself, and I found really? myself yes. So, you know, Trader Vic's hospitality certainly uh, leaked into my family, uh, you know, lineage uh, from way back, before my time even. But um, I was reading Trader Vic's books, like, you know, in high school, trying to figure out how to mix a good cocktail then, um, and spent much of my 20s, you know, perfecting the art of good times and, and uh, fun having. Yeah. Um, and when I decided I wanted to get into hospitality and look into um, eventually opening up my own place, found myself with an opportunity to bartend at Trader Vic's in Emeryville. So you, you did? So I did. So I moved from San no Diego. Way. Yeah, I moved from San Diego up to uh, the Bay Area. Um, was crashing on my best bud's couch in San Francisco and barting over to Emeryville. And um, Man, one of the best views you could have as a bartender. What I find interesting is that you said that your interest was in hospitality. Yeah. Which I, th which I think is the key to what makes what you do different than a lot of other people. Because you didn't say like, oh, I, I wanted to learn how to be a bartender. You already immediately knew that like, you had to take things further than just making drinks and ceremony. Yeah, I don't know if that makes me uh, just more of a control freak or something like that. But Oh, no, come on. How did Pagan Idol come to be? Or how did you, what's your story with that? So I was at Trader Vic's for about a year. Yeah. Um, just a year. Just a year. Uh, you know, uh, they wanted me to um, uh, kind of travel and uh, train bartenders uh, at their uh, locations abroad for yeah. some of their openings. And being bright eyed and bushy tailed bartender in the Bay Area, yeah. uh, I really wanted to start bartending in the city and participate in, in that, you know, um, cocktail revival scene that had been going on there for, yeah. you know, 10 years already by the time I, I got up here. So yeah. started doing some bartending um, in the city. And uh, after a couple of, uh, you know, really great openings, got to open Hawkes on San Francisco, um, which unfortunately closed. Uh, right away during COVID, but um, that was a that was an amazing experience participating with the, the cocktail program and being a part of a restaurant uh, to that level. 
Um, and I was looking to bartend right across the street from there at a little speakeasy style uh, jazz club called Local Edition. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of the biggest cocktail bars in San Francisco in the basement of the Hirsch building. Yeah. Just looking to do one or two nights, make some extra money. They were clearly making money and I, yeah. that's what I was interested in at the time. And when I interviewed with the CEO of the Future Bars Group who owns that bar, um, he saw Trader Vic's on my resume and told me that he was planning to open a tiki bar um, within the next year. Oh, wow. And that he thought I was the guy to, to head up the project for him. And I said, well, nice. you know, when, when do we start? He's like, well, I've, uh, I'll take you to the property now. And it was already, you know, he had already signed the lease. And uh, we walked through the shell of what was at least three, you know, um, failed businesses or closed businesses, rather. And, uh, you know. My, my eyes just lit up and I said, well, you, you uh, found the right guy for the job. And uh, so started dreaming and working with amazing uh, artists and uh, craftsmen. Yeah. And built what you know as Pagan Idol. And the interesting thing about Pagan Idol, you go into the front. It's kind of like you're in a ship. Oh, yeah. And everyone, before I went there and people were saying, it was like, oh, you got to go and you got to wait till they give the call to go back in the back. And I'm like... What are you talking about? And then the I back. went, and then you went, and you're like, back in the backs, like the tiki bar. Yeah, well, we wanted to really, um, you know, I encapsulate the I idea drink of a escapism. Lot of pagan I don't like you know, there. as soon as you walk off the street, right there on Bush in the financial yeah. district, we wanted you to be just in a totally different world. And so you walk your feet. Oh yeah. And and seriously, like say like, and then you get into the back in the back, and you're by the like waterfall thing. You're in a different world. Yeah. Fun fact about that location is I guess the Pagan Idol location is where one of the Tiki Bob locations was. Yes. Like, was that the first, first one? No, no, it was uh, an extension. One. Yeah, the second one. Uh, Tiki Bob's mainland rendezvous was in the same exact space that yeah. we built Pagan Idol into. Didn't know it when we started the project, yeah. but quickly found out and figured it out. And boy, oh boy, how serendipitous and beautiful for, for someone who's trying to you know, open up a palace for true tiki files around the world. Yeah. Um, to find out something like that was pretty incredible. And what was really, so like, so time goes by. I think a year or two goes by, I run into you. And you're like, I open up and I start in another bar. And I'm like, what? Zombie Village. And I'm like, what? What are you, what are you talking? And I'm like, all of a sudden I start seeing pictures of this place that looks, well, here was the weird thing about Zombie Did I not tell you at, when we were up at, uh, Tiki Con? Yeah, but I didn't believe you though. <laughs> then I started seeing pictures. I'm like, okay, well, there's this, there's these like booths, like these like full on tiki booths. And then I'm seeing like pictures of like a bar with like skulls at the bottom of it. And then I'm seeing like other pictures of like this giant like these giant tikis. And then there's like a cave, and I'm like, what the hell is this place going? And then I go, and finally I go, oh my god, it's huge. Zombie <laughs> Village is huge. So how did how did that come to be? Well, with the success of Pagan Idol, yeah. um, our owners were really interested in doing another tiki bar. And, of course, that's an amazing idea. The world, you know... More tiki bars, the better. Can't have enough. No. Um, and they wanted to do it right in the very same town of San Francisco, which was the part that I was kind of like scratching my head, like, are you sure? You know? Pagan Idol's really killing it. Yeah. Do we really want to do another one? Could that be the right call? And he said, well, yeah, I want to turn tradition into into a tiki space. And tradition was one of the bars within our group that yeah. uh, I really love to go drink at. And it was one of my favorite spots to go hang out myself. So I was a little bit conflicted and sad about the idea. But I walked in there for the first time thinking, all right, well, what if we were just going to do a no-holds-barred follow-up bar? to Pagan Idol and I just kind of looked at it with fresh eyes and right when I walked through the door and like looked up and realized what you were working with ceiling space wise I was like oh yeah I was like we can do something crazy in here and that's what we went for we didn't want it to be just a carbon copy or like a you know or a lesser version there's, even of Pagan Idol no 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 seriously like I've, I've never I've never there's I cannot compare Zombie Village to any Tiki well and that's kind of what the, the real goal was was to do something that was you know never done before and just super different for tiki but still maintain some of the um, traditions and you know classic elements of a great tiki bar 
historically. The, yeah, so. Well, this is the thing, and I wrote, I, I did an article about Zombie Village for Exotica Modern, and it kind of reminded me of, and I even wrote this, and it was the idea of like of that joke of like the blind guys that are feeling like an elephant, and one guy's feeling the tail. It's like, yeah, it's long and skinny, and the one guy's feeling the ears. Like, no, it's real flat and thing. And the thing about Zombie Village, it's like you have these different sections oh, yeah. of the bar. Like you have the sec, like you have the bar that's in the middle, that's kind of like, like the anchor, I guess. And then you have the booths on the on the side, and then you have kind of like a more of like a standing room over to the left with the giant tiki's with the, the la- the laser imposed, images. Yeah, the uh, projection mapping. Yeah. Some you know modern techniques to really uh, <laughs> extend the depths of what you're. Seeing or not seeing. <laughs> then, then going, then going towards the back is like all of a sudden, like I'm in a cave, and then upstairs is like the skull bar, and then the, like, and, the, and you can like look down, and there's like like giant like tiki's that are up above the bar. Yeah, it's like it's so big. I couldn't feel any luckier to have had the opportunities to both do Pagan and then follow it up with Zombie Village, uh, with the support of the Future Bars group and their trust in me. So. And I think we came up with a couple of the best bars in the world, really. Well, now, now we're here. And now we're now here. we're here at Wilfred's Lounge. Fast forward. So who is Wilfred? Wilfred is the um, very fortunate younger brother of Flora. Okay. Um, Flora, Flora Springs, yeah. the matriarch of the Comes family. Uh, Wilfred was the younger brother to Flora and stayed put right there in Oahu and lived his whole life out there. Was a bartender in the 40s and 50s, so to me, uh, thinking about his life and what he got to experience and the yeah. time that he got to experience it in, you know, pre-statehood mostly, um, just lived one of the most amazing lives you could, you could imagine. Um, and uh, they wanted to... Uh, honor their Uncle Wilfred, uh, John and Nat wanted to honor yeah. Uncle Wilfred and kind of let this be an homage to their Hawaiian roots through uh, his legacy since he was a man of uh, hospitality and leisure, uh, much like ourselves. Um, but yeah, what a what a, um, a great life he got to live uh, out there in Hawaii. Well, one thing that's cool, like with the food that's on the menu here is a lot of Hawaiian dishes. Oh, sure. The Kahlua pork, the katsu chicken, the mac salad. You yep. know, all that stuff. Yeah. So that was cool. And then I had the Kahlua port. Excellent. And I guess that's really where the story begins is that the Comez family um, has Hawaiian roots. Mm-hmm. Uh, the matriarch of their family uh, came over in the early 1900s yeah. uh, to live a life as an independent woman, which was a new idea back then. Yeah. And, um, you know, she started her uh, legacy and family here, uh, which started with a nursing program and ended up uh, opening up Flora Springs Winery up yeah. in uh, St. Helena. Um, John and his son Nat uh, run the show over there now, and the, the two of them ended up purchasing this space uh, just, I, I believe, 2018, 2019 and had originally planned to do a fine dining, uh, wine pairing restaurant sure. concept, yeah. um, you know, that was very high level and what a beautiful location and, and space to do something like that in. Oh my God, yeah. So 2020 comes along right when they're about to really break ground on that project. COVID happens. COVID happens and they, you know, takes the, the air out of the tires, so to speak, and they um, kind of rethought it a little bit and said, you know what? When, when people come out of this COVID thing, uh, they're really just going to want to let loose and have a good time. And, you know, Napa doesn't really need a, another fine dining restaurant that, with a great elevated wine pairing program. I mean, that's literally everywhere. Everything, here. Everywhere here, right? And they had always wanted to do a tiki bar, whether it was just a little one in the back of the winery or yeah. or uh, at their house or uh, for, the, for the, the public, decided to do that. And so they partnered with Michael Cobb, who was the project manager yeah um, and he was here uh, 24 7 um, collaborating with guys like Bamboo Ben Billy Crud yep um, you know we got a lot of pieces from Wicca so he helped design yeah and I saw build. some Ken Pleasant ones down there yep. by the, yeah. the barn so he, he designed and built this place and uh, was uh, preparing to be the general manager and at the time they didn't have a actual liquor license they were going to be doing uh, beer and wine based tiki drinks 
uh, with a tiki environment uh, in, a in a beautiful space. And, uh, you know, uh, in, in the fourth quarter, they ended up acquiring a liquor license. And so this is like when they're, you know, starting to conclude the build out, yes. um, get a liquor license, finally get it transferred over, which it, of course takes time. And Michael and I were talking uh, around that time and we met at Tiki Oasis actually. And he brought me onto the project as a consultant to write the cocktail program. And um, he ended up having trouble uh, because of COVID with his business down in Solvang, High Roller Tiki. Yeah. So he kind of had to um, go back and make sure that, that his baby was going to be okay. And uh, the Comas family, who I had just met, um, we hit it off and had a great, uh, you know, beginning to our relationship. And they said, well, I think you're, you're the guy. You, you can yeah. GM this place. So... Um, I'm doing the best I can, and so far the reports are good. Well, here, well, here's the <laughs> thing: like, the drinks are incredible, but every place, but Pagan Isle, Zombie Village. I, what I love about all the places is it's like you have, you have a perfect mix of like your classics, and then like your originals, all great. And then, so the, like, like even with the build out here, I mean, it's like this. I think. I, this rivals like Zombie Village. I mean, it's like this is incredible. I mean, it's it's so cool. How it's different. I mean, it's, it's like it's, it's you know, apples big, and oranges. The big but windows I mean, and the outside element and the airiness. Um, it's different from any tiki bar. I mean, I'll be honest. The first time I came and walked through the space, which was when Bamboo Ben was first here doing his thing, I came to see it, and I saw the windows and I was like, "Wow, are you guys gonna cover those up? You know, like is it gonna be what what I know and think of as a you know tiki bar that should be kind of dark and cave like and and you know, built inward toward you, towards you to extend that depth of, of uh, feeling. But no, you know, keeping the windows open and they did such a beautiful job, you know. Even with the technology that we're having, like you're saying about like with the projections and stuff like that, we're at a point in time, we have the schools, the skills, we have the tools, we have the technology to like, let's take things further. Sorry, yeah. And like, all right, yeah, okay, well it's not, you know, a tiki bar doesn't necessarily have to have like, we have, you know, there's the, the rules, but they don't, you know, have to play by the rules. The point is, in my opinion, is like, is the bar transportive? Right. When I'm in here, do I feel like I'm somewhere else? And you don't want them to be all the same. No. That wouldn't be any fun. No. Yeah. And, no, and, and, and it's funny, it's like, it, 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 but the three bars that you've been involved with, it's like, I'm seeing, gen, I'm seeing themes, but they are not the same by any means, though. They're all their own thing. Like if I went if I went to Zombie Village tonight, it would I would be having a completely different experience that I'm having here, and vice versa at Pagan Island. That's for sure. That's for sure. And the whole and idea like the whole idea of escapism, you know, creates a, a, a playing field that there are no bounds to. I mean, really, you can. There's so many different ways you can do this. Yes. Um, and by this, I mean you know, creating a, a great tiki uh, escapism experience. I completely agree. Well, so Doc, you knocked it out of the park again. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Doc, for yeah, taking time out of your busy day to to come on my show. Nice to have you. And here. it's truly an honor because here's the thing. I mean, I've always like given props to like Bam, like like Bamboo Ben. You know, it's like I feel or like Notch or anyone who's like anyone who's building new tiki spaces to me are so important. Or anyone or people like you that are taking this baton and taking things forward because like I love old tiki bars I do but even I have enough I mean I, I'm a realist to know that like yeah the tiki tea isn't going to be around forever I mean like the old, the old bars eventually they're all going to don't gonna, say that yeah I don't mean well that. you know and it's one of those things where it's like it's all the future of tiki is the new bars it's the new bars and it's definitely adding to the legacy, and and, and you know the to, to have um, you know we live in a time where you know, the, the the rums that we can get and the, oh the, the ingredients that we have access to, um, and even the knowledge you know to of what ingredients not to use per se, um, are just so you know it's just a rare moment where uh, for those of us who have figured it out and do have access to a place um, that's serving it, yeah, you know, bravo, good for us, yeah, good for us, and and. Uh, um, there are so many popping up all the time, so uh, it's great to see what, what other things can come forward out of that. Mm -hmm.